I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to take a look at metadata template files and moving metadata templates around between the various programs that we might use to edit metadata, which would be Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Bridge, Photo Mechanic, and we'll look at a program called XN View, which is worthy of your consideration. It's a low-cost photo browsing and metadata editing application. Now, if you go to my blog and you download the starter kit of metadata templates and unzip it, you'll find a folder, and in that folder, you will see two files, exactly what we're looking at right here in Photo Mechanic, as a matter of fact. One is a .xmp template file. The other is just an ordinary JPEG, but it's a template file too, because in its metadata, it contains our Joe Photographer sample template. So let's go ahead and install this template in Photo Mechanic, and we'll modify it a little bit, and then we'll be able to pass it on to other programs. Now you could do this operation in the IPTC stationary pad in Photo Mechanic, and it would work just fine. In fact, templates and snapshots are completely interchangeable between the stationary pad and the per picture metadata editing dialog, which is what we're going to use here. Now a second ago, off camera, I made a copy of my caption template JPEG, and I stripped all the metadata out of it and I renamed it Suzy Template JPEG because our aim here is to take the Joe template, we're going to edit it, and we're going to make a new Suzy template. And ultimately, we're going to store it in this file. Any old JPEG will work for what I'm going to do right here, uh, preferably one where you don't mind if you mess up the metadata, but actually, any will work. I'm going to click the I and bring up the metadata editing dialog. I also could have done that with the I key on the keyboard. We're going to load our .xmp template file. We'll navigate to it, select it, open it, and there we are. It has populated all the metadata fields with our standard Joe Photographer sample template. Now we could go and manually edit all of these fields, but we're going to take a slight detour here in the sake of expediency and uh, <clears throat> laziness, and we'll go ahead and apply that template to this JPEG file and we will bring up Photo Mechanics Find and Replace feature, and we're just going to change Joe to Susie. One quick word of warning about this feature, which is wonderful, but this flyout lets you choose between selected items and all items in the current contact sheet, and it will, in a heartbeat, find and replace text in every script of metadata in every file in a contact sheet which is a wonderfully powerful thing if you want it, or a tremendously destructive thing if you use it accidentally, you have been warned. There we go. So there was eight occurrences of Joe. We have replaced with Susie. We'll go back now, and we'll manually touch up a few details. We'll choose, we'll change Joe's initials to Susie's in the description writer field. And we're going to say that Joe and Susie have a studio together. And so we're going to change the copyright to say Joe or Susie and Joe Studio, which will be the name of their studio. We'll just say that their company owns the copyright to the pictures that this template will go on. Now, when we're happy with this, we can save this template back as a new .xmp template file. So we'll hit save and we'll name it. We'll just call it Susie template template.xmp and we'll save it. Now we can use that Susie template.xmp file to move our Susie template to any program that understands .xmp template files. And Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Bridge, in fact, can do that. Now in Photo Mechanic, you don't use the load and save buttons to operate your templates. That would take forever. What you use is Photo Mechanic's very powerful snapshot tool. So we'll open the snapshot list. We'll go to save, and we'll give our new template a name, and we'll call it Suzy Template, and we'll OK it. Now, anytime we want to, 
we can just go to our snapshots, apply the SUSY template snapshot, and the SUSY template is applied. We can go ahead and edit it for a given picture. What we're going to do right now is we're going to OK it, and we're going to save it to this JPEG. And so we now have a SUSY template JPEG file. We can use this file to move our template to any program that doesn't understand .xmp template files, or almost any program that doesn't understand .xmp template files. You can usually use a JPEG to move a template to a metadata authoring program. And in our case, that includes Adobe Lightroom, it includes XNView, and it even includes Press IPTC, which is the program I use to apply IPTC metadata on photos on my phone. Now we're going to move to Adobe Lightroom. Adobe Lightroom cannot read and write XMP template files, so we're going to use the JPEG version. We're going to import our SUSE template JPEG, JPEG file. Now with our caption template JPEG file selected, I'll go to the right rail in Adobe Lightroom and I will pull down Edit Presets. The Edit Preset dialog box comes up and it's populated with all the values that we just put in our SUSE Photographer preset. At this point, if we wanted to edit them, we could simply edit them until it looks like what we want it to look like. Then we go to the top flyout again and we pull down to Save Current Settings as New Preset and we'll give it a name. We'll call it SUSE Template. We'll hit Create to save it. Dismiss the dialog, and there we have it. Now, in our presets, we have a new Lightroom preset for SUSE Template. We can select it at any time, and we can apply it to photos. If we want to reverse the process, and if we want to make a template file, all we have to do is select the file that we're working with and write our metadata back to the file. And now that file is once again a JPEG version of a caption template file that we could use to move the caption back to Photo Mechanic or to XNView or for that matter to Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Bridge. Our next stop is Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge can indeed read and write XMP metadata template files. So to make a template in Adobe Bridge, or to import a template, I should say, in Adobe Bridge, let's just go with any old photo selected. We'll go to File, File Info, which can also be called with Command or Control I. Now the simplest and easiest way to import a template, if we have a template already edited to our satisfaction, is from the templates flyout in the bottom of this dialog box, we show templates folder. That brings up a file manager view of the templates folder, and we can simply drag our template in. There it is, and we're done. Now, Let's say we needed to edit our template here in Adobe Bridge. In this case, from the same flyout at the bottom of the command I file info dialog, we could import our template. We're going to choose clear existing properties and replace, so we start with a clean slate. But take a look at this bottom option here. We have an append option that could be pretty handy later. So we're going to navigate to where we have our SUSE template stored. We'll choose the SUSE template XMP version and import it. And here it is. Now we can edit it to our taste. And when we're done, we export it as an XMP file. We'll call it SUSE template edited. We'll export it, and then from our templates flyout, there it is. We can choose our edited SUSE template, or we can choose the SUSE template that we simply dragged into the, into the uh, templates folder. Or 
if we wanted to, we could work with our JPEG template file in a sort of a similar way. And with our JPEG template file selected, if we go to Tools in the main menu in Adobe Bridge and go to Create Metadata Template, and it brings up the Create Metadata Template dialog already populated with Susie's metadata from our JPEG template. Now, these fields are live. We can edit them any way we want until we like the way our template looks. Then we go on the left-hand side of this dialog and we tick tick boxes on any field that we have a value. Except date created, which is pretty useless in a template because that's going to change from photo to photo. When we have that the way we want it to look, we'll give it a name. We'll call this one Suzy template from JPEG and we'll save it. Now, anytime we need to apply a template, we can bring up our file info dialog from the templates flyout in the bottom. We have Suzy template from JPEG as well as our edited Suzy template that we made from the original XMP Suzy template file, and the actual XMP Suzy template file that we simply dragged into the template file folder. Now, if I click off of Suzy template JPEG and I select nothing, and I go back to the create metadata template dialog, I get that dialog and it's a blank slate. Nothing is filled in. So there we have it. We've imported a template into Adobe Bridge. We've edited the template. We've exported the template. And if we wanted to export a JPEG template, we could simply apply the Suzy template to a blank JPEG and we would have a JPEG template that we could use in other programs. Now we'll go to Adobe Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop can read and write XMP template files. And while you probably won't be using Adobe Photoshop very much for authoring metadata, it does have the capability of adding metadata to a photo before you save it. So it's handy to have templates here. We're going to create a new file in Photoshop, just a blank file, or we could use an existing file. Anything will do in this particular case. But here we go. We'll just create a blank rectangle. And we'll go once again to File and File Info. This brings up the Photoshop version of the File Info dialog box, which looks different than the Bridge version. And in fact, it's actually a little more powerful. You can read just about any kind of metadata in this dialog box. It has a template flyout just like Bridge does. We can go to Import. We can navigate to our templates. Here's our Suzy template XMP file. Choose the file. Choose Open. Once again, we have Import Options. We'll clear everything. Start with a blank slate. It'll load our Suzy values into the Photoshop version of the File Info dialog, which we could then go ahead and apply to a picture or we can edit, export, just like we did in Bridge. And there you have it. Now, we can similarly simply go to the folder, just like we did in Bridge, and we can drag files in and out with the same results. Our final stop is XNView. XNView is a very affordable program. It's an okay metadata authoring tool, Frankly, it's a better metadata removing and stripping tool than it is an authoring tool. XNView does not write or read XMP template files. So we'll go ahead and we'll use our JPEG template file. We'll select it in the XNView browser. We'll go to Tools. We'll go to Metadata. We'll go to Edit IPTC XMP. And this will bring up a metadata editing dialog and we go through, it's tabbed. We go through the tabs, we edit it to taste, 
we make it look like what we want it to look like. Then we simply hit Save Template. We'll name it. We'll call it Suzy Template. Now, in XN View, you can overwrite a template in this dialog by simply not changing the name as it appears. That's really handy if you only need a temporary template. We'll OK it as the Suzy Template. We'll cancel it back out of the dialog box. And there you have it. Now we have a template in XN View. Once again, we could repeat the process and we could write our metadata back out to a JPEG and then that would be a template file. However, the limitation that I referred to in XN View's metadata authoring capabilities is this. XN View can read and write to all of the IPTC fields that are common to the original IIM format and the new XMP format. Fields that are not common to both formats, the ones that only appear in XMP, which would be the extended IPTC fields, which includes most of the rights fields, the contacts fields, XN View cannot write. So we have that limitation. When we work with metadata in XN View, authoring metadata, we can't write to the IPTC extended fields. That's not as big a handicap as it might sound. We have to bear in mind that because legacy applications can only read the original IIM fields, that users might not be able to see the data in the extended fields anyway. Now, XNView does actually write metadata to both the XMP and the original IIM fields. It just can't write the extended metadata that only appears in XMP. So there you have it. We can now read and write metadata templates in all of our relevant applications. We can move metadata information around between them. And we should be able to keep our metadata consistent across programs and across time with our templates. So once again, I'm Carl Seibert. Please hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. You can also ping me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And until next time, mind your metadata.